Alright, I'll do another animated movie, but I'm making it a foreign knockoff. I got standards to think about after all. I've featured my fair share of knockoffs on this show, but usually whenever I do the whole country name followed by whatever's getting ripped off thing, that's reserved exclusively for Turkey. You know, Turkish Spider-Man, Turkish Superman, Turkish Batman, you get the idea. But the way I figure it, why should they get to have all the fun? It's not like Turkey's the only country to copy American pop culture. Hell, they're not even the most blatant. Just look at South Korea's flag, it's obviously a copy of the Pepsi logo. Korean Tron refers to a 1983 Korean animated film which, as you can probably guess, borrows heavily from the 1982 Disney movie Tron, a film that was ahead of its time not only for its groundbreaking use of computer-generated imagery, but also because it showed that being good at video games can make you popular. The real title of the movie is Savior of the Earth, but screw that, it's a Korean-made knockoff of Tron, so I'm calling it Korean Tron. After all, if this guy can be Spider-Man, then this can be Tron. Oh, that's cute. The movie's telling me it's copyrighted. <laughs> right, because the people who made this movie really gave a shit about that. And it's brought to us by Video Program Distributors, a subsidiary of filmy, thingy, legitimate business. What the hell? This movie was made by somebody called Rick Ashley? That makes sense. This movie is like one giant rickroll to people actually expecting Tron. So anyway, the movie opens on a scary old man, obviously dubbed by a 20-something intern. All my experiments have finally paid off. With my new computer system, I will be able to control the behavior of every human on the whole planet. Soon they will spend their days looking at porn and leaving racist comments on message boards. <laughs> Wait and see, the great leader of the computer empire! <laughs> that evil laugh was delivered with all the enthusiasm of someone who's probably not getting paid to dub this movie. Looks like this guy's already causing trouble with the world's computers since these jets appear to be frozen. Or maybe they're just out of gas. And it looks like he plans to take over the world using traffic accidents. The kid from the Gamera movie was right! And I'm beginning to think they cut corners with the voice acting here. Hey, you get that thing out of the way! Move it! Hey, don't be talking to me like that! I ain't taking it! You watch what you're saying! <sighs> There's one guy dubbing this thing, isn't there? I wish I could confirm that, but both the movie and IMDB don't list a single voice actor for this thing. I can't say I blame him. Who the hell wants to take credit for this acting? The movie does credit one writer, but you cannot convince me that this dialogue isn't being made up on the spot. Our counter is willing to support you. We only want world peace. This is what we're all looking for, you know? Yeah, like we just want world peace, you know? Like, OMG, you know? Doctor, Doctor, we're in trouble! Oh, good, they got at least one female voice actor. The cast of this movie just doubled. I'm not sure why everyone's mad at this guy. Maybe things will make more sense in Japan. Even if it doesn't, I'm just glad I don't have to worry about animated characters in Japan getting raped by tentacles. There are no non-stop express. You're right! That was the express train they had to stop at this station! It's gonna crash! Oh, no! No! What the hell is going on? An episode of Samurai Pizza Cats makes more sense than this movie. I'm assuming the guy from earlier is causing all these accidents to happen, although it's a little hard to tell since the dialogue keeps trampling over itself. Find anything? Saying? Not much, sir. Uh, okay, you know what, movie? Uh, let me just do you a favor and show you how you should have done this scene. Find anything? Not yet, sir. You see what I did there? It's a lot better when your actors don't talk over one another. Especially considering there's clearly one person doing everything! Admiral Lincoln does not look pleased. Although something tells me this guy isn't voiced by Daniel Day-Lewis. It doesn't matter. You gotta keep on trying it. You gotta figure it out. It's like we're chasing rabbits or something. Nice delivery. I really believed you didn't give a shit about the words you were saying. If this keeps up, I'll be worse off than all of those computers. What, you mean this movie? Yeah, I know how you feel, pal. Someone go and find Dr. Kim and bring him here on the double! Dr. Kim is the bald guy from earlier, and I can understand why he's so respected. After all, he did invent the hover hand, Pat. Oh, and I guess this guy's our Flynn stand-in for the movie? That'll probably be a decent substitute for Jeff Bridges, since it already looks like he's high out of his fucking mind. 
I think his conduct at work is a little unprofessional, though. Stop it! Hey, come on, don't be so mean. I want to take you out to a movie. I've heard it's a good one. If the movie's Korean Tron, then you heard wrong, pal. Yeah, that's right. Just plug your ears. That way you won't be able to hear that she's suing you for sexual harassment. And oh, looks like he's been goofing off instead of working. I tell you to check the computer and all you do is play stupid games. Forget about that. What the hell just happened to his face? Go on now. Go to the game room and play as you wish. I don't care. Wait, so he can just play video games at work? Best job ever. Meanwhile, in the USSR, even though it looks an awful lot like outer fucking space to me... Okay, prepare to launch the missile. The coordinates are set. What happened? I don't know, it's gone! Cause you just fired it, you idiot! The US isn't too happy about the Soviets launching a nuclear missile. Oh, and fellas, I think your America map might be a little inaccurate. Has the missile re-entered the atmosphere yet? No, Commander. And it just disappeared and- uh, I kinda messed up my line there. Should we do another take? No? Oh, oh, I'm going over budget just saying this? Okay, sorry. But what are they gonna do about that missile? Wow. Thank God that 30-second crisis was averted. And look, now we get a scene at the United Nations. You know, just like in Tron. Hmm. Where are you going? Is it inside a video game? Because you're supposed to be ripping off Tron, not war games. It turns out the guy from the beginning is an old colleague of Dr. Kim's called Dr. Butler, and Dr. Kim decides to go looking for him. <gasps> oh, so that's where Bruce Boxleitner's been all these years. Butler has entered the computer world, so this electric current over here. The only butler that you see now is his body, which obviously cannot be transmitted. Yeah, and judging by the smell, he's been that way for a while. Somebody should really change his bedpan. Uh-oh, the movie's flatlining. I better move things along. Dr. Kim learns about Dr. Butler's plan, which causes the computer to suck him inside. Now, they said earlier that a person's body can't be transmitted, so naturally, the computer transmits his body. Because eat a dick, consistency! Hopefully not Flynn can save him. That is, when he wakes up from his nap. Go and find Dr. Kim right away. Don't delay, it's urgent. <laughs> Just kidding, Sheila. I'm going to the game room. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. Scarlet here goes to check on Dr. Kim and ends up getting sucked into the computer too, although she didn't know anything about Dr. Butler's plan, so not really sure why the computer did that. Meanwhile, it looks like our hero is trying to get the high score so he can be in Korean Last Starfighter. Come on, come on. Okay, are they just gonna keep showing him playing this game? Who the hell wants to watch somebody else play a video game? Well, at least he seems to be causing trouble inside the computer. What is happening? We've lost 63 ships so far. He's really a genius. Yeah, or unemployed. You must stop him. He is a real menace to us. <laughs> okay, fellas, if this guy is a threat to your evil plan, that says a lot more about you. <laughs> Looks like he managed to get the high score, or the date? <sighs> Whatever. But the game's not done with him yet. Hey, what's this? Must be some torp of bonus. Oh, is it? Is it some torp of bonus? You sure it's not some other torp of stage? Seriously, was the dubbing for this recorded live in one take? How the hell do you leave a fu- How- How the hell do you leave a fuck up like that in there? What the hell is going on? Great, now the movie's reading my thoughts. So he's in the video game now, which means this Tron ripoff can finally start being like Tron. That is, if this guy doesn't get killed first. <laughs> and the Troll 2 acting award for best scream goes to... Thankfully, he had an extra life, but where the hell did he warp to? Hey, I don't know who you are, but don't push me around. No one does that. Hey, get away from me with that thing. Hey, ah! 
Okay, little tip. If you don't want people to fuck with you, you should probably do something tougher than just going, Nyeh. Damn, looks like all this stress made him cross-eyed. Either that or the person who animated this was cross-eyed. So what, this guy's on trial or something? Prisoner 7-2 is found guilty on all counts and is sentenced to a life imprisonment penalty of playing the death game. Hey, as long as the death game isn't plumbers don't wear ties, I'm okay with that sentence. The prisoners get brought before the movie's Sark stand-in, but instead of David Warner's silky smooth voice, we have to listen to more droning don't-give-a-shit dialogue. You are the prisoners that have been convicted by the court. Your sentence is to play games for eternity. What, that's it? That's the sentence? You do realize this is somebody who loves playing video games, right? I mean, why don't you just add 40 years of supermodel blowjobs on top of it to make sure he really learns his lesson? If anyone is thinking about trying to escape, forget it. You will be captured and beaten by John the Black Warrior. Uh, John the Black Warrior, huh? Well, clearly he's called that because his uniform is black, right? Yeah, yeah, that's totally why they called him Black John, sure. Alright, so they're sentenced to playing games, so what's the first game? <laughs> Okay, movie, just because Tron had a scoop ball scene doesn't mean you also have to have one. Nobody who watches Tron remembers the scoop ball scene. In fact, I had to go back and check just to make sure it was really in there. And what the hell? He's getting chased by Pac-Man now? Great, the movie's turned into Korean pixels. Oh well, at least this guy's voice is a little less grating than Adam Sandler's. <laughs> I beg you, controller. Please let me live. I don't want to die. Don't make me do this. What the hell is everybody afraid of? It seems like whenever someone dies, they just immediately come back afterwards. So what's the danger? Unless, I don't know, maybe that wasn't him before? It's bad enough everybody has practically the same voice. Did they have to make so many characters look the same too? Like here, would it have killed the animator to at least make this guy's hair a different color? I can't tell who's who in this shot. Looks like he's playing asteroids now. Appropriate considering this movie is both ass and more irritating than hemorrhoids. And you better not step out of line or else African American John will whip your ass. <laughs> think you're kinda tough. No, I think he just knows that you're a little bitch. <laughs> okay, okay! <laughs> ah, now there's a look that says, you're not even worth the effort, kid. Oh, they're playing Othello now? Boring! What else is happening? The prisoners escape. Commander, what should we do? Send out Black John in his race car and see how fast he really is. Look, his name is just John, okay? You don't need to keep calling him Black John. Or hey, maybe you'd prefer it if everybody just called you White Sark! Anyway, Person of Color John makes his way across the intro to Mask after our hero, or... Wait, is that supposed to be the same guy from the beginning? Ugh, I don't know and I don't care. My God, he's dead! Oh. They say he's dead, but by the looks of it, there's at least three more of them just in this shot. Not Flynn decides to make a break for it, and he's in luck now that the guards are suddenly more incompetent than he is. Ha! Hey! Boy, I bet these guys really wish they had guns right about now. But what am I saying? Guns in a video game? That's just crazy. And holy shit, Sark's a Nazi. You must continue to work on the energy supply vessels. Only then will we be in complete control of everything from nuclear weapons to digital watches. Soon I'll have access to every celebrity dick pic on Earth. It won't just be the fappening, it'll be fapageddon! <laughs> oh yeah, these two are also in the computer. I forgot, mainly because I didn't care in the first place. Maybe now they can help him escape. Now, when playing the death game, you have a chance to escape. When you're chased, turn right when you cross an obstacle. No, no, just going right isn't going to help him. If he really wants to beat this game, he needs to go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. That's just common knowledge. Hopefully these two don't run into any trouble. <gasps> oh, I get it. It's because I'm Black John, isn't it? <laughs> you're next. Okay, movie, I get it. His name is Black John. Is the black exploitation soundtrack really necessary? Looks like he's got some splaining to do to Sark. He is a special one. I want to play the rabbit hunting game with him. Which one is that? I don't know, probably the one where you hunt rabbits? It's the most exciting of all death games, Commander. 
Hmm. You mean the car chase game? That's a good one, all right. Or I guess it's a game about cars. Easy mistake to make when the script for the movie is clearly being made up as it goes along. So we now get a car chase scene, which I guess is supposed to be this movie's version of the light cycle scene, since those are nowhere to be found in this movie. Okay, so let me get this straight, movie. You make sure to copy the scoop ball scene from Tron, but you don't have the light cycle scene? That's like a Star Wars knockoff that has the main character bitching about picking up power converters and not blowing up the Death Star. Wait, what? Who the hell is this? Did they splice in another cartoon in the middle of this thing? Because I don't remember any one-eyed pirate ladies in Tron. Oh well, the movie does take place inside a computer, so I guess it's only appropriate it has a dad-ass meme. And when did this movie become Korean Mad Max? I don't know, I wonder if I'm ever gonna see Sheila again. Yeah, what about Sheila? Sheila's the redhead, right? Like, is that Sheila? Come to think of it, what the hell's your name? We're over halfway through and I still don't know what it is. And in another inexplicable plot development, these two are friends now. Yeah, they stop at an oasis after chasing each other around the desert and suddenly they're on the same side. This guy doesn't make a speech, he doesn't save John's life, just a drink of water and a competitive stare down and boom, instant BFFs. But even that isn't as weird as what comes next. They get captured by some robots and brought before this thing. Wow! Hey! Oh, hey, good looking. What's your name, sweetie? <laughs> hey, John, this thing's really strange. Yeah, I'll say it wants to fuck you. And no joke, the next several minutes of the movie consist of the main character being held prisoner and getting hit on by Robo Devil Doll from Hell here. Why don't you have a nose? You hurt me, you bully. What's the use of a nose in a computer world? Kian, he's one to talk. He didn't even have a nose in the real world. But sure, just go ahead and give yourself some plastic surgery because of something this asshole said. So are we done with the whole nose thing now? I've got a nose, I've got a nose. La 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 la. <sighs> Oh good, she's falling apart and dying. I just got so excited that I fell apart. Screw my joints together. Speaking of joints, I think I'm gonna need some to get through this movie. You mustn't leave me. You know Sandy needs you here. There are so many things that we can do. Uh, are these two about to fuck? Cause I've seen enough Asian cartoons to know that's a real possibility. Oh, thank God, they're just bow hunting. Oh, Key. I'm so happy. Don't you feel the same? No! No, I don't feel the same! Please tell me they wrap up this subplot quick. No, Sandy, we're different. I'm a human being. You don't understand. What? Get out of my sight immediately! Sorry, I really didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Sandy. Dude, she just told you to leave. Now's your chance to escape, dumbass! She finally does let him go, and perhaps realizing they've strayed a little far from ripping off Tron, she gives him an identity disc. The sun loves human beings. It gives light and life to the earth, and with this you can find your friends and accomplish your mission. May the sun's rays give me power. Pretty amazing that that thing's solar powered, considering you're supposed to be inside a computer right now. And the robot and the pirate lady are friends? Man, I'll bet these two are really wishing they got captured by her instead. So has Dr. Butler taken over the world yet? I finally got it! All that incredible power! Everything will soon be in my hands! Your huns? How the hell are you supposed to conquer the world when you can't even say your lines properly? Uh-oh, looks like they're almost done taking elements from Tron. Somebody better stop them, quick! Looks like it's time for the final showdown between our Sark knockoff and our Flynn knockoff in a battle to the- <laughs> What? What the hell is up with his face? There's only one way to settle this, with a game of extreme frisbee. Huh. Oh. Okay, that was easy. But oh no, if they don't stop Dr. Butler's ship, then something, something, computers, something, something, nukes, something, something, take over the world! Good thing they've got some help from Pirate Lady. Fire! 
We were just hit by two torpedoes. Also, someone set us up the bomb. Huh, <laughs> she still didn't get me, but I still must finish my direction control unit. Hmm, he's a crafty one. Having a ship that's stronger than your torpedoes counts as crafty? Well, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. This is a movie where this counts as a hero. Oh well, thanks for your help, I guess. I don't know who you are. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. So what are they gonna do now? We have to destroy the internal control unit of the vessel. We must bomb it. Sure, that sounds like a thing that'll fix stuff. But before they can do that, tragedy strikes. <laughs> Visible minority John, no! Go on without me. <laughs> oh, John! So, was John a computer program, or a real person that got sucked into the computer that we didn't see? I don't know why I'm even asking that. There's clearly no answer to that question. So is this movie going to have a master control program, or are they just going to copy Moses from that South Park episode? Your hard work will be rewarded today. You will see the master return circuit finally completed. From now on, we will no longer need any humans. It's all part of my master plan to replace humans with computers. Or something. But before Dr. Butler can take over the world, or destroy it, or whatever the hell he's trying to do, Pirate Lady fires at his ship again, and because it's closer to the end of the movie, they actually destroy it this time. Okay, so Dr. Butler gets killed by a frisbee, and the resulting explosion somehow blows them back into the real world. Because fuck you, logic has no place in this movie. These two are so happy to be back home, Sheila lets Dr. Kim have a celebratory motorboat. Wait a second, what about poor... Keith, right. What about him? He must still be in the computer world. We can only hope. Besides, I think Keith's busy making Korean Rad Racer. Just kidding. Turns out he's back in the real world, too. And now that he saved the world, maybe Sheila will finally like him. Hmm. Oh? I told you before to keep your hands to yourself. Nope. You may have saved the world, Keith, but you're still a fucking dork. Oh well, maybe Robodoll will take you back. So now's the part of the video where I say, well, at least that movie was better than Tron Legacy, right? <laughs> Wrong! This was not better than Tron Legacy. This was way, way worse than Tron Legacy. The easiest thing to compare this movie with would be the Turkish knockoffs I've featured on this show. And while they both share the same bargain basement production values and a complete lack of shame when it comes to copying American pop culture, I can safely say that I enjoyed the Turkish movies a lot more. I don't know, maybe it's because I could actually understand what everybody was saying this time, but I had a hard time sitting through this movie. Instead of being so bad it's good or as batshit crazy as the Turkish films, mostly it's just annoying. And if you're looking for some whacked out animation to watch, I featured a lot better on this show. But hey, who knows, maybe when it comes to foreign knockoffs, Korean ones just aren't my torp. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. I've got to know, I've got to know, la 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 Ha ha ha!